Financial Risk Manager, FRM. Part 1 of the FRM exam covers the fundamental tools and techniques used in risk management and the theories that underlie their use. Risk Taking Corporate Governance Perspective Agenda So let us begin by getting introduced to the topics that will be discussed in the coming slides. The main agenda would be to cover the overall risk management in a corporate governance perspective. Here you will come across various topics and terminologies that you are going to learn in more detail in subsequent readings throughout your preparation for the examination. In this lecture, we will begin with viewing risk management as a value-creating activity. We will then learn how corporations create risk profiles. We will learn about enterprise risk management. We will then learn about the various approaches in managing or valuing risk such as the risk-adjusted approach, certainty equivalent approach and probabilistic approach. We will also learn about AIRMIC, Enterprise Risk Management Process, in detail. Later in this reading, we will learn about hedging and how firms must implement a proper risk management framework in an organization and the best practices in risk management. To start with, let us try and understand risk and value creation in detail in the coming slide. Risk and value creation. Let us first define risk. Risk is a concept linked to human expectations. It indicates a potential negative effect on an asset that may derive from given processes in progress or given future events. In the common language, risk is often used as a synonym of probability of a loss or of a danger. In the assessment of professional risk, the concept of risk combines the probability of an event occurring with the impact that event may have and with its various circumstances of happening. This definition mainly implies the negative consequences of risk, while in a true sense it is a mix of danger and opportunity, which means that risk is usually associated with reward. We can classify risk into operational, financial and market risk. Financial risk can be further classified into internal risk, such as insolvency, counterparty risk, and financial structural planning risk, or external risk, such as interest rate risk, currency exchange risk, and inflation risk. We can also view risk as a value-creating activity, which means that the risk analyst needs to estimate the effect of each risk on firm value and determine the cost of reducing each risk. If risk reduction is costly, the decision makers must decide whether the benefit to firm value justifies the costs. In short, the firm must seek a value maximizing risk management strategy. Moving on to the next slide, we will discuss risk profile, how it is categorized, along with it, we will also find what risk governance is. Risk Profile and Risk Governance Usually, a firm identifies potential risks to the firm using judgment, experience and assumptions. These risks include operational, financial and market risk. All these risks are then categorized into different groups such a profile is called a risk profile of the firm. Risk governance is a systematic approach to decision-making processes associated to natural and technological risks adopted to achieve more effective risk management. It seeks to reduce risk exposure and vulnerability by filling gaps in risk policy. It incorporates such criteria as accountability 
participation and transparency within the procedures and structures by which risk-related decisions are made and implemented. The next slide discusses the concept of enterprise risk management. We had understood risk profile and risk governance in this slide. So, as we move on to the next slide, we can find out what enterprise risk management is and how does it help maximize firm value. ERM Enterprise Risk Management Enterprise risk management is a comprehensive and integrated framework for managing credit risk, market risk, operational risk, and economic capital, and risk transfer in order to maximize firm value. Today, there are two widely disseminated ERM approaches, COSO2 ERM and CAS ERM. COSO2 ERM is a risk framework from the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treadway Commission that is geared to achieve strategic, operational, reporting, and compliance objectives, while CAS ERM framework was developed by the Casualty Actuarial Society. The framework focuses on hazard, financial, strategic, and operational risks. ERM addresses risk management in several ways as listed here. First, it overcomes the isolated approach to risk management. For example, in a conglomerate in which one division is long in currency A and another division is short in the same sum in the same currency. Responsible division managers might decide to purchase separate currency hedges. This represents a siloed approach which does not enhance value. Taking an enterprise-wide approach instead using ERM renders such actions unnecessary because the conglomerate already has a natural hedge. It focuses on risk management as a value-creating activity. In this approach, managers estimate the effect of each risk on firm value and determine the cost of reducing each risk. Calculating risk-adjusted value. Pursuing value-maximizing risk strategies requires that decision makers assess the value of the risky asset. In this section, we will learn to determine the value of the risky asset by discounting the cash flows from the asset to present value. The three steps involved are outlined in the slide. The first step involves estimating the cash flows from the project, asset, or business. Let us keep the cash flows at time period T as CFT. We will now find the relation for the value of the asset. In the second step, we find the risk adjusted discount rate that will be used to discount the cash flows in the future. This discount rate is found using the expression that is, risk-free rate added to the risk premium. The risk premium is a surplus return for taking the risk. This is found by multiplying the beta of the asset with the difference in the market and risk-free returns. The beta of the asset is the relative sensitivity of the asset with respect to the benchmark index. This is the cost of equity to the investor. If the asset is composed of debt and equity, then we need to find the total cost of capital using the expression for the cost of capital as given in the slide. An important point to remember is that the risk premium is usually calculated from historical data and has high estimation error. Also, the beta does not reflect the current business mix and financial leverage of the company. Finally, in the third step, we calculate the value of the asset by discounting all the cash flows found in step 1, using the discount rates found in step 2, and summing them up. With this, we conclude the valuation method 
of risky assets. Next slide demonstrates the method using an example. Risk adjusted method. Example. Let us demonstrate the valuation method we learned in the previous slide with an example. In this example, we are given the cash flows from the asset for its life of 10 years. The risk free rates, risk premiums, and beta are also given. It is given that the asset is financed by 40% debt. The tax rates and cost of debt are also given. Using the expression for the cost of equity, we find the cost of equity to be 18.3%. Using the expression for the cost of capital, we find that the discount rate is 12.6%. We use this discount rate in the PV function of the financial calculator. We get a value of 120,994 as the value of the asset. You can similarly apply the formula for different figures and calculate the value of risky assets. In the certainty equivalent approach, which we will be dealing with in the coming slide, we try to understand how expected risk cash flows can be adjusted instead of the discount rate. The different ways of cash flow adjustment is mentioned here. Certainty Equivalent Approach In the Certainty Equivalent Approach, we adjust the expected cash flows for risk rather than the discount rate and use the risk-free rate as the discount rate. The adjustments can be done using several ways. The first method is using utility functions. The second method is to subjectively estimate a haircut to decrease the expected cash flow. Another method is to convert expected cash flow to a certainty equivalent. When compared to the risk adjusted method, Cash flows are estimated in risk adjusted approach while they are guaranteed in certainty equivalent approach and the discount rate is a risk adjusted discount rate in risk adjusted approach while it is the risk free rate in certainty equivalent approach.